Have a safe trip. Tell everyone that's the high. I will. Okay. We're off to Ireland. I'm gonna miss you, baby. I'm gonna miss you too. Okay. We're gonna take this all the time. Yep. <laughs> May not hear many stories. I want to hear the Uncle, stories. I Uncle record. Charlie was a customs officer. He lived in in uh, Dublin, of course, in suburb called Rella. And uh, when I first came to America, I mean to England, sorry, in 1947, he was a customs officer on the Livy where we got on the boat. Oh, so he put you on the boat? Oh, he, well, he didn't actually put <coughs> on the boat, but that was what he did. And uh, he let us bring in uh, sausages to England and so on from Ireland or vice versa. I oh, can't remember. Oh, which. that maybe they might not have been strictly. They might not have been allowed, yeah. Ah. Uh, or the customs officer was sometimes taken away so they could eat them at home. <laughs> and, uh, and then he became a customs officer at the Dublin airport until oh. he finally retired and ah. passed away. So oh. that, that's all it was about Charlie. First time on a plane in two years. Okay. So long, St. Louis. Guacamole. Yeah, no, there's uh, that's fresh made guacamole. There's they've got sliders, they've got a mushroom brie bisque, which I think I'm gonna have to go try. Mushroom shallot brie. Okay. You went back for more guac, didn't you? I couldn't wait. I couldn't. She made her own spice for me this time. Oh, did she? Whatever she wanted to do to it. Oh, there you go. And it's okay. got a bit more um, kick to it, perhaps. Well, I don't know about the kick, but I told her not to. Homemade guacamole. Right. We'll go for a walk. I'll see you. I'll be here. Not sure I'm thrilled with their motto, but say hi, Dad. Hi. Who's hi? I'm a flight to Dublin. Are you calling me hi? No. Don't you be calling me hi. Oh, put your mask back on. It'll throw you off. <laughs> Yep, and we have arrived. Well, you know, we probably could have, but it would have been cheaper. We have arrived at the Moxie Hotel in Dublin. Beautiful Moxie. Oh, here we are as the street sweeper goes by. Yeah. Here we are in Dublin. Oh, Dad, Dad thinks he's going to go to the casino and double his money, double his money. Cockles and muscles? Really? Okay. Right, right. We spent our first morning in Dublin, wandering up and down O'Connell Street, checking out the spire and then crossing the Liffey River and exploring Temple Bar and the Trinity College area. I was eager to learn more about the Easter Uprising, so we headed back across the river towards the General Post Office, where the fateful events of 1916 would unfold. Kind of gives you the very 
traditional university look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll skip on that bus. Oh, well, there's some poor soul on it. It's a Christian thing. Right? So that's where you go to see people off? Down there, I see people off. Just the French hand. Yes. Yeah. 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 The post office is where the rebellion started when? 1916, right there. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so, what was blown up where the memorial was right there? That was called Nelson. Nelson? Right. Yes, I know that, yeah. Goes an IRA thing, right? Yeah. So tell me about your dad during this. Well, 16, he had to be about 25. Right. He had to um, quit working for the police because he didn't want to shoot his own people. Ah. And all that. But that was in the 1930s, not 1960. Okay, it's a royal. Yep. There's a two. So this was the time your dad. Yeah, he might be 35 or something. Right. Yeah, he did it. He quit being a policeman before I was born. Right. Well, my mother said he should have stayed on longer. <laughs> He'd uh, got a bigger pension. Got a big pension. Yeah. But it was because of all this, still. Yeah. The... You see him here too. After lunch, we stopped into the local tourist office, where we realized we could buy a three-day bus pass for 20 euros, which, considering we'd paid 50 euros just for the cab ride in from the airport, we thought was quite a great deal. Dad realized that the same number 16 bus that he rode as a young man, or a young boy, actually, in from uh, Terenier, was still running the same route, albeit with a newer bus. So, what did we do? We hopped on the number 16 bus and we took it all the way out to see Dad's childhood home. Oh, I'll stop it for you. Look at that. I saw you getting your phone out. And, and look, there's the Dublin Mountains up ahead of us. Tell me about how old you were when you lived here. I was nine when I lived here. What year was that? 1947. So let's see, how long ago was that? That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Way before you were born. Long before I was born. Yeah, you were just a twinkle in my decades, eye. Decades and decades and decades before yeah, I was yeah, born, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like to wish. No talent, Avenue. That's why I've got a lot of talent. <laughs> you see what they call that road over there? The cloisters. Oh, the cloisters, ah. Yeah. And that would be another word for nunnery, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the cloisters. Ooh. The chili cloisters. And when we lived here, uh, all these houses had this brick wall. Yeah. But see, he's got his car there now. So he took his brick wall down, obviously. So he didn't have drives back then. But... Farming. Kind of like um, gardening men stuff yeah. behind the wall there. So if anybody had money to buy that field, he made a pot of money. Oh, yeah. Uh, making new houses and all. Yeah. 1964. 62. Yeah. There, here's ghost, yeah, ghost one bed, Just one house, one bedroom up there. Just one bedroom? And the front. I guess there's one in the back too. That's what I know. Two bedrooms. And all. And the doors are back. Frank and uh, Eddie spent the time. Eddie actually took over this house when we went to uh, England. Did he? Eddie and Carl, yeah. Go stand by the gate. Let me get a picture of you in front of it. Pardon? That's okay. There you go. Yeah. 
But there's no point in knocking on the door, you know. There's actually something that might be a pub down there. Okay. I thought I was really in all that. I wasn't, damn it. Uncle Jim used to work here at Brady's Pharmacy. Okay. He was a very well known chemist in the area. After a badly needed full night's sleep, we woke up feeling refreshed and ready for a tour that we'd booked to, uh, to see the Book of Kells on the campus of Trinity College. The Book of Kells is one of the most famous books in the world, a beautifully illustrated, hand-drawn version of the Gospel. Okay, it, it's going. There you go. Now, if you press the little white button, it will also take a picture of me. And I'll even try to smile. Oh, my. For some of it, was even toxic. You lived to 30 or 40 years of age anyway. It didn't so. really matter. <laughs> The Great Library at Trinity College is absolutely stunning. It contains a Brian Burrow Hart model as well as a full copy of the Book of Kells. Why am I whispering anyway? Oh, it says mistakenly linked with Brian Burrow here. A King of Ireland killed in the Battle of Clontarf, yeah. He didn't. It was just Sunday morning. Oh my goodness. After picking up a couple of pricey souvenirs at the Trinity College gift shop, we made our way down Grafton Street to the beautiful St. Stephen's Green. Pounds. Euros, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Thank you so much. I've done that.
actually in the thick of it. Oh, the tests. It's like a Hitchcock movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to get that close to him, honestly. Look at that. Look at that over there. Yeah. Retired? She is. I figured. She run or do you rescue them? I rescue them. Oh, awesome. So awesome. I have a friend of mine up the street in St. Louis who does the exact same thing. Uh, do they still race in America? I don't know if they, you know that more than I do. Um, yeah, so we came this way then. Yeah, I think we're actually at the other corner. Yeah. Dad and I walked through the beautiful St. Teresa's Church in Dublin, where I had a rather strange encounter with a woman you see in the background there. She came up to me and she said, I'm going to pray through you to find myself a husband who's a policeman, which if she'd have seen what I was about to do to poor Molly Malone, she may have thought differently. Careful where you put your hands. You want to put your hands somewhere else? Hey! hey. hey. Here we are at Glasnevin Cemetery. There are many famous Irish people that are buried, and my great grandfather and dad's grandfather is buried here. So we're going to see his grave here. Here between Grave KM-107 and Grave LM-107 is the unmarked grave of my great-grandfather and dad's grandfather, Francis Tully, who was a constable in the police force, passed away in 1931. There it is. He was a British diplomat, a British diplomat by profession and is famous for his activities against human rights abuses in the Congo and Peru. Yep. We all know so on <coughs> for his dealing with, Germany's, with Germany prior to Ireland's Easter Rising, captured while attempting to import arms from Germany, of course. Oh, that was the boat that was captured. For the Rising, he was executed in Pentonville Prison, England. It is. Well, it just has his name. It just has his Michael Collins. Oh, okay. Here lies Michael Collins. These flowers are all plastic. They last longer that way. Plus, it's pretty cold out. Yeah. After visiting a grave, we're going to stop into the Grave Diggers Pub for the best kind of Guinness in town. So they say. He said what? Oh, you can wave a bus down. Okay. Just okay. put your hand up. Sure, a barman with your There he is now. There he is So why don't you go say the bus? Get me the poncho. This is Mick Finnegan, our new friend. Mick Finnegan and, and John Tully. Come on, Tully. Tully. Tully and the Finnegans. We sound like we're fucking. We sound like we're getting together. We sound like we're chased down by Walker, Texas, fucking Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> we're outlaws, bro.
We found a reserve spot for ourselves with the flowing tide, but then on the way home we stopped into the Piper's Corner across from the hotel for a truly magical moment. find the place where I am lying and say an ave there for me and I shall hear the soft you tread above me and oh my grave will warmer sweeter be for you will bend and tell me that you love me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to Like you're enjoying your breakfast. I just realized right now that you can see the spire of Dublin right outside our hotel window. Huh. On our final full day in Dublin, we broke out our trusty bus pass and made our way to the beautiful island of Hoth where we walked the cliffs and then we had a wonderful seafood lunch by a very warm fire which was needed by the <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. That's uh, right there. Yeah. 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 I think we've been on this bus about 40 minutes already. Yeah, no, it's not about 45 minutes, I think. Uh, we took the bus and climbed the hill up to Hoth. I wonder what the different colors on the walking is. The green looks like the easiest and the red. Seems yeah, that's probably what it is. Perhaps the difficulty of the trails.
think I got. Oh yeah, there you are, you son of a bum. Okay. Hang on a minute. Let me get some of these green, yellow things. And the sun is shining on him now. Yeah. I need to learn how to pronounce this in Irish. Dad smile. <laughs> a nice seat looking out the window at the bay. And a nice warm fire over there too. Pardon? Can you see the sea? Can you see the sea? I can't see the sea, you see. Stand up and look out the window, you'll see the sea. I can't see the sea, you see. Thank you. It's nice, actually. So, Dad's having the fish and chips, and I'm having the Dublin Lawyer Lobster, which is very nice. And he's paying the bill. I'm paying the bill because. You need a Dublin lawyer salary to pay for the Dublin lawyer lobster, but it looks wonderful. There we go. Yes. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Make sure. Pardon? What'd she say? She says, oh, yeah, that's right. I make sure I got that. There it is. After we returned from our walk around Hoth, Dad decided to take a nap. So I decided to do the one thing I hadn't had a chance to do yet in Ireland and was visit the distillery. So off to the Jameson distillery I went for a fun tour. Now here is the man himself. It's Mr. John Jameson. He's tall, he's dark, he's handsome, he makes whiskey. I was 200 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> now we also had conflicts at home. So in 1916, Ireland had their rising for independence. And this distillery was actually used as a fortress by the rebels due to its prime location to our general post office where the rising took place. Now, under martial law, no one was allowed to enter the building for two whole weeks. And back then, if you didn't work, you didn't get paid. But our archives actually show that um, Jemison paid every single worker for those two weeks' wages, which was a very high gesture at the time. Then in America, uh, where are my Americans? Prohibition. What was that about? <laughs> you nearly killed us. That was another huge blow <laughs> to the Irish whiskey industry. Made of Irish whiskey, believe it or not. Ingredient number one, good old-fashioned water. Now, Ireland, as you might know, has an abundance of rain, which we never complain about. But uh, the word whiskey is actually derived from the Irish Gaelic language, Ishka Baha, which literally translates to water of life. Maybe one more. It's been threatening rain all week. It's finally happened, and I'm at a distillery. Well, heck. Dear gosh, rainy double at night. Huh? Yeah, I don't think so. And we're off to the airport on the bus. Here's our 
bus. Come on, Dad. Right. Oh, now he comes up here. Here we are with our rent a car. Steering wheel's on the wrong side, so I guess I'll have to figure this out. Ages and they won't let dad drive so I'm stuck doing it all oh my god Michael's driving this is the first five seconds of no five minutes of his driving I think we're on the right road to Tipperary or somewhere anyway so be it there's Michael whatever you think careful watch the car in front my rosary and thank god I've got it on if we go we go I know where I'm going I'm not sure who's going with me. <laughs> anyway, we're on our way. Not to Derry, not to Ashbourne. Castlereagh. West to Castlereagh. Well, we're on our way to Galway, uh, and uh, we just got the windshield cleaned, so we thought we'd take a picture of the flatland in the middle of uh, Ireland. As we drove out into the Irish countryside, we quickly realized that we actually had enough time to drive all the way over to Galway. Not only so I could see Galway Bay, but we could have lunch in Galway as well before we headed to Castle Ray for our final night in Ireland. We're eating, eating lunch overlooking Galway Bay. <laughs> chowder yeah. made with uh, poppy seed soda bread he said right wow look at that oh my god look at that After I drove Dad nuts, taking many pictures of sheep on our way, we made it to our final destination for the night, the Tully Hotel in Castle Ray, Ross Common, our family seat. The family name was evident all over the town. And Castle Ray met all expectations as a beautiful country Irish town. After exploring the town a bit and discovering one of the most beautiful parks I think I've ever seen in my life, we had a nice dinner of shepherd's pie and settle down for our last night in Ireland. <laughs> He's just sitting there, right? Just waiting for his owner. Yeah. Hey, boy! Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I just told, just told you off for doing that. Hey, buddy, waiting for your owner. You're a good boy. Feel the fairies and the leprechauns. Is it? Ah, there's a waterfall then. Smile. 
I know we did a lot of driving today. Yeah. Our last day in Ireland, it was a beautiful Irish morning in Castlereagh. We're getting ready to head to the airport. The street's a lot quieter. At the Tully's Hotel, they gave us the, the actual key to the front door, Dad. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> and we found out why this morning, because there's nobody downstairs, and we just unlocked the front door so we can put our things in the car. But we're going to stick around for breakfast and to meet Paul Tully, the Maybe. proprietor. Maybe, if I can convince Dad. Oh, Who knows? I may retire over here after all. There you go. You have to stand the winter. Yeah. But the summers will be nice. Yeah, the summers will be wonderful. The dogs will love the window, the winters. Yeah. Huh. Look at this one, four bedroom, 180 euros. It looks quite nice. Yeah. 0.57 acres. Original features: fine fireplaces, plaster work, well proportioned rooms. I'm just sentimental like that. Yeah. Paul and John Tully, distant cousins at some point, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe so. It's very likely. <laughs> and if not, what a lovely name it's anyway. It's very likely. <laughs> Last thing we need to do before we leave the Tully's Hotel is get the frost off the car. Had a little bit of freeze here last night. Feels wonderful. What a beautiful morning. Not much traffic out here. Now I'm a bachelor, I live with my son and I work at the weaver's trade. And the only, only thing that I did that was wrong was to move up very young way. I wooed her in the summertime and in the winter too. And the only, only thing that I did that was wrong was to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. Uh. I just filled up the rental car, driving all the way around Ireland. It was 30 liters of petrol. I said the price wasn't here. It was a dollar. It wasn't too bad here. It was a dollar. 181 euros per liter, so it was 54 euros for the entire trip. So not awful. Just the lovely oh, Irish food. Hey, at least we got we have leg room too. Look at that. You know what? We have leg room, sort of. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm hoping for too. Yeah. Depends on which way we bank, isn't it?
is a 